This next uh, segment is going to be um, one where we study the topic of exponents. Um, particularly, we are going to uh, study multiplying and dividing exponential expressions. If you take a look right down here, here the, are the rules for exponents. And so the one thing I want you to notice in these rules, do you see the letter A here to the m power and an A here to the n power? Look at this a to the m and this a to the n. When we talk about multiplying and dividing these expressions, we have to and are only able to multiply and divide when the base, this a, is the same. And when we do, you'll see that you add when you multiply and you'll subtract when you divide. We're also going to raise a power to a power. That's this third option right here, a to the m power raised to the n power. And we're going to look at that shortcut. And the, the shortcut is to just multiply this exponent times this exponent to get your answer. Um, we're going to understand uh, 0 as an exponent. We're going to understand order of operations with exponents. We are going to look at negative exponents. And then we are going to evaluate algebraic expressions that involve exponents. The um, four rules right here are such that you might want to refer back to them. And I will be uh, talking through them as we do some individual problems. Um, so for example, question number one here is a multiplication problem. And the bases are alike. It's y to the third and y to the eighth. Now, I hate to exaggerate a problem that is uh, quite lengthy, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. y to the third means this right here. y to the third is shorthand for that written out. I'm going to put parentheses around that. y to the eighth is shorthand for these y's written out eight times. One, two, three, four. I think I got eight there. Yeah. So if I want to put these all back together in shorthand form, I have to write it as a base of y with the number of y's that I have here. Well, I had 3 here and I had 8 here. So my answer to this problem is y to the 11th power. Um, so again, putting it back into shorthand form. So again, when I multiply, I am multiplying y to the 3rd times y to the 8th. I add these exponents. Um, so you know, pretty uh, unusual to keep track of. For some folks, it's real hard to remember. When I multiply, I add. And when I divide, I subtract. Question number two. Um, this just means the number two times k to the fourth, which is this. There's k to the fourth. And then there's another k right here. And it's got no exponent written. Exponent written. It's a 1. When there's no exponent, it's understood a as a 1. But there is one more k in that problem. So the answer to this problem is just the 2. But now I have k to the fifth power, because I take this 4 and I add that 1, and I get a total of 5. And also, I wrote it out longhand. Let's look at number 3, a division problem. m to the seventh power is 7 m's. upstairs. And then m to the fifth is 5 m's downstairs. And I get to remove, reduce these. This is equal to the number 1. m over m is the number 1. So is this, and so is this, and so is this, and so is this. So when I reduce all those, all I'm left with in this problem is m to the second power in shorthand because I have m times m. That's two of them, m to the second. See the 7 and the 5? When I divide, I could have su just subtracted is all. I have this habit myself of always subtracting the exponent in the numerator and then taking away the exponent in the de denominator, no matter if there's negative exponents or not. So for example, this problem right here, n to the third and n to the sixth, um, I would take the 3 and subtract the 6. Well, when I do that, I get a negative 3. So your answer for this problem is the coefficient of 3 times n to the negative third power. But us math people, we don't accept negative exponents. We don't like those at all.
And so what I want you to do with me is I want you to think about this end of the third and this end of the sixth. I'm going to come off to the side and do something different with those. End of the third is this. End of the sixth is this. So when I reduce n over n and call that 1, and n over n and call that 1, and again, then what I have as far as these n's go is a 1 upstairs. This is 1 times 1 times 1 upstairs over n to the third power. See this n to the negative 3? I need you to know that any negative exponent can be written as 1 over that. And finally, the 3 has to stay upstairs. It doesn't get moved downstairs. My answer to this problem is 3 in the numerator, because 3 times 1 is 3, over n to the third. From now on, when I have a negative exponent like this, n to the negative 3, I'm just going to throw it downstairs. So depending on if it's upstairs or downstairs, I can just throw those factors up or down. So this b to the negative 5 right here, the property for with exponents when I have a negative exponent is to rewrite it as 1 over b to the positive fifth. You know, while we're at it, come on over here to number 11, 6 to the negative 1. That's 1 over 6 to the positive 1. Well, 6 to the first is just 6. So the, the number 6 to the negative 1 is the fraction 1 sixth. Okay, we've dealt with some multiplying, some dividing, some negative exponents. Let's raise a power to a power, and let's talk about why. So x to the seventh raised to the second power means to take x to the seventh and multiply it by x to the seventh. So do that twice. Well, we've just studied that when you multiply, you add their exponents. So 7 plus 7 is 14. So if you need to, you're welcome to go ahead and write this out twice to get your x to the 14th power. But would you notice that 2 times 7, or 7 times 2, is 14? So that's another way to do this. The big thing is to recognize that everything is, that's in the parentheses gets raised to this power. Everything. Let's go see what the next problem is up, up above. So 3r to the 4th squared means to take 3r to the 4th times 3r to the 4th. So what a lot of people forget to do is they forget to do, essentially, this 3 gets squared and the r to the 4th gets squared. 3 squared, or 3 times 3, is 9. And r to the 4th times r to the 4th is r to the 8th, because I'm adding the exponents, or I take this 4 times 2 right there. So let's continue with shortcuts. This is a to the first and this is b to the first. So 1 times 4 is 4 and 1 times 4 is 4. Let's do it again. It works with a quotient raised to a product. So 3 times 2 is 6 and 5 times 2 is 10. You cannot reduce these because these are xylophones and yaks. The bases have to be alike. They are x's and they're y's, so you cannot subtract their exponents. So you got to be careful. Um, so let's look at number 10, and then we'll, we'll um, pause so you can take a break and think about the next few problems. This 3 is raised to the first power, so the shortcut is 1 times 3. Or in other words, numerical factors get raised to that power. And then 8 times 3 is n to the 24th power. And 3 to the 3rd upstairs is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27, over n to the 24th. That's a good start. The next few problems that we're going to do when we turn the page, we're going to look at 0 as an exponent, and we're going to look at a lot more negative exponents. It's going to get a lot more complex.